Wow, strugglers, would you look at that? Another Super Bowl that will not feature the Minnesota Vikings. All I know is pain. Please, God, make it stop. So the big game is this weekend, and it got me thinking. It got me pondering something fierce. Have Super Bowl commercials gotten worse? There's this general sentiment that I've picked up on that the commercials have kind of lost their luster since back in the heyday when, like, Doritos and Budweiser were going nuts. Iconic ad after iconic ad. You might have your hands full once I'll pick up the control little man. Put it back. Keep your hands on my mama. Keep your hands on my Dorito. And I wanted to know what other people thought, so I asked some people that I know. And all of them seem to agree that the recent ads aren't nearly as memorable as they used to be. And I go on, I surf the web. You know, I'm reading through threads. Everybody else also seems to agree. They're not as good as they used to be. They ain't as good as they once was. Everywhere I look, people keep saying, Super Bowl commercials suck now. Well, newsflash, sweetheart, all commercials suck now. And then I have a note that says, cut to Lumi ass crack cream commercial. Pits under boob, thigh folds, butt crack. I wonder if maybe we're just exposed to too much media at all times, especially advertising, that we're just kind of numb to it now? Are you more likely to remember one good thing you had at a buffet or a delicious steak from an expensive dinner? I don't know, I'm just a guy with access to an archive of every commercial ever made and an advertising degree that's been burning a hole in my pocket for the last six years. You know how doctors get a little card on their video that says they're a professional and should be qualified to talk about whatever they're talking about. I want one of those for advertising. So here's what I did. I spent a bajillion hours, give or take, okay, watching every single Super Bowl commercial that has aired for at least the last 25 years. And I'm here to tell you my observations if you're keen to hear them. The world didn't exist before I was born and you all started Truman showing me, so we're gonna start with the 90s. Bet you Bud Light, my friend here can beat you. Yeah, right. In general, you can't really put a decade into a neat little box. Like, were the 70s all about disco? Yeah, maybe to some people. But what about the Watergate scandal and the anti-war movement? Yeah, I watched Forrest Gump. I'm just preemptively warning you that when I make a generalization about these time periods, it's more so just like one aspect of it and not the entire picture. Obviously, come on, guys. That being said, humor has always played a big part in Super Bowl commercials. It's one of the most effective ways to make an ad memorable, and the 90s in particular really leaned into wacky visuals to get their humor across, on top of doing things like incorporating animated characters into these live action shots. There was just this sense of whimsy with the camera work and the directing. I get the feeling that they were having a lot of fun with every phase of making these ads from brainstorming, the set design and the props are always so much fun, shooting the dang thing, so many Many of them have that same energy as like something my friends and I would have made back in high school just with a bigger budget. There was a Budweiser commercial from the 99 Super Bowl where a lobster was like holding a beer bottle hostage in order to escape from this restaurant kitchen. Just put it, put it down, man. <laughs> Guess I'll have the steak. It's so dumb. I just, I want you to know, I am gonna go buy Budweiser after I'm done filming this. Cheers to whoever wrote that goofy commercial from 25 years ago because you just made a sale. So we're just dipping our toes in here, okay? I wasn't born yet in the 90s. I mean, that's not true. I was, I was born. I wasn't there. <laughs> I was there, but I wasn't, you know what I mean? But I do think that it was worth at least touching on briefly because the 90s, the Super Bowl commercials in the 90s, planted a lot of seeds for what was to come later. They were experimental and full of really interesting production, and in that way, they are T-Pain's stoic mixtape. Uh, I've been watching Funky, and he compares a lot of things to old Weezer projects, so I'm gonna do that with T-Pain because he's one of my favorite artists. Shout out, Funky. <clears throat> oh, God, right, okay. Uh, yeah, here's one more commercial that we have to talk about. I wonder what this one's gonna be. Thank you to Helix for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys are getting hyped for that sleepover that I talked about. I just got word that we are getting food catered in, so it's gonna be a night to remember. Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and sent straight to your door for free if you live in the US. It's as simple as taking the super quick Helix sleep quiz on their website and they'll use those answers to match you to a mattress that should be perfect for you. We've had a midnight Lux for years now and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Just to clear things up in case you missed it, um, when I showed the sleep quiz on screen, uh, I was well, let me just walk you through it. So I selected side sleeper and then medium firmness. So that is why, that, that explains why the midnight 
mattress is the one that we got. I know how much people love anecdotes, so here's a good one to sip on. My family was staying overnight in a hotel last month, and we woke up the next morning, and Jaden had this to say. We sleep in luxury every night. This was awful. <laughs> and this isn't even that bad of a bed. No, it was terrible. I also just, I want to say that um, the mattress is good because we wake up well rested, and we wake up with less aches and pains. Helix has a new line of mattresses as of this year that they call the Elite. The Elite mattress has five different layers built in and there's a cooling system that's just right in the mattress. And they also say it's the most supportive and durable mattress yet. I know you might be nervous about buying a mattress that you haven't laid on. I totally understand that. Helix offers a 100 night sleep trial as well as a 10 year warranty. There are also flexible payment plans and financing options to make getting a fantastic mattress just that much more accessible for you. You can go to helixsleep.com slash Scott Kramer and you'll get 20% off plus two free pillows. Thank you to you guys for using my links when I have them. It helps me out a ton. So there you go. That is my commercial. Now let's spend some time talking about commercials that other people have made. Well, that didn't have anything to do with the Super Bowl. Moving on to the 2000s from what I saw when I was watching every commercial ever, I would say this era was the time of risk taking Give a little love and it all comes back to you you're gonna be remembered for the things that you say you do Among other things, obviously, a huge aspect of the 2000s in pop culture was the raunchy teen comedy. This was the generation of pop punk music and unrated DVDs at Blockbuster. MTV was going wild. Okay, and that energy was focused like a frickin' precision airstrike directly into the Super Bowl commercials. I made a full video about the GoDaddy ad campaign a few years ago, holy crap. And that company was probably the most famous for their spicy advertising during the Super Bowl. It was like, it was a thing, it was a huge deal. But they kind of inspired a ton of other brands to do the same thing after they found success with it. I've had this visual of Miss Piggy doing the sexy Jessica Simpson dance burned into my memory since I was 10 years old. They didn't need to do that, but they did it anyway, baby. There was a Bud Light commercial from 2003's Super Bowl that I'm genuinely shocked actually made it on air. I think if I were to show it here uncensored, I would actually get demonetized. I'm not even kidding. And this played on millions of TVs across the entire country all at the same time. This is how a nation heals. We all stood together as one at that moment and saw that ad. Wow. <laughs> a boatload of companies were really starting to hit their stride in the 2000s as well. So many of the companies that people tend to associate with Super Bowl commercials really were like, they were slamming at home at this time. Bud Light had so many ads. Doritos was going crazy. E-Trade had their iconic baby commercials here. Freaking career builder. Whose career are you building? Who are you, career builder? I don't know if anybody's career was actually built by them, but they sure did make a lot of fun Super Bowl ads. This feels like the time that companies started to let go of that fear of being seen as unprofessional maybe, and just let the copywriter interns at the ad agencies go freaking nuts. Mad Men premiered in 2007 and straight up changed the advertising game as we know it. Coincidence? Nothing is a coincidence, and you of all people should know that. And since this was right at the beginning of that Super Bowl commercial wave that was about to take over the whole nation, like I said, the 90s kind of planted some seeds, but the 2000s, this is when it really happened. But since this was the beginning of that, there was still room for like smaller players to sneak their way in. You ever heard of Emerald Nuts? I didn't think I had, but apparently anybody that watched the Super Bowl in the 2000s did because they were advertising all the time. Emerald Nuts? What? So random. So specific. We gotta get a commercial for strugglershop.com in there if they can do emerald nuts. Dot com ads were also everywhere. Holy smokes. That bubble was getting ready to burst and Mark Cuban was just foaming at the mouth like, oh, look at all these dot com commercials. This is good for me. Things were just so exciting back then. The 2000s genuinely changed the game when it came to Super Bowl ads. It was genre flipping, got everybody super excited to see where it was all gonna go and it was loaded with sexual themes? The 2000s were rap a turn singer. We've decided to make casual Fridays all week. Yeah. Of course, if it's mandatory, it can't be casual. Nice pants, Terry. Expose yourself to something better. Career builder, start building. 
So some of that raunchiness did bleed over into the 2010s, but I would not say that it was the main theme of the decade. I would say that the 2010s were the golden era and the worst of the worst at the same time. I'll call it the pastronaut phase. When they were good, oh boy was it fun. But when they were bad, let's just go ahead and change the channel. The 2010s were when I was in high school and college, so I do have a lot of really good memories associated with these commercials. The M&M's ad where the red guy shows up naked. My shell is brown. It just looks like my milk chocolate is showing. Only a fool would think I'd actually show up naked. So it's that kind of party. Hit it. I'm sexy and I know it. I mean, that's never not going to be funny. E-Trade Babies on Skype is one of the silliest and most charming commercials of all time. You can't even argue with me on that. Don't even try to. And that milkaholic Lindsay wasn't over? Lindsay? Milk of what? I think Betty White getting laid out in that Snickers commercial might actually be the best ad ever made. It started a whole ad campaign for Snickers that was very successful. So successful, in fact, that it made Snickers the number one candy bar in the world. Before that, I think it was number seven, which, you know, it's just decimal points and semantics at that point when you're that big, but come on, number one? Even the Got Milk commercial with The Rock was pretty memorable. I wonder if somebody made an entire video about the Got Milk campaign. Man, that'd be fun to watch. Oh, I bet that'd be a good video, man. We got the sexy Mr. Clean ad in 2017 and the It's a Tide ad spots in 2018. It's time for a cold refresh. <laughs> Tide ad. What else would this be an ad for? A razor? No. Tide ad. Is your man the kind of man who would climb the height? <clears throat> I'm in a tight end. We don't deserve this level of quality. And don't you dare act like dilly dilly wasn't in you or your friend's vocabulary at some point. Dilly dilly! The 100 year anniversary of the NFL led to one of the greatest meetings of legends since the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. I think it's kind of undeniable that this was well, I want to say it's the heaviest hitting era of all Super Bowl commercials so far. But what makes it hurt my soul is that so many of the other non-great ads were just basic movie trailers and weather tech commercials. I don't know. Don't ask. And car commercials. Nothing says the Great Recession is over like 8,000 car commercials. You guys have money again, right? That whole thing is... That's over, right? You want to... You wanna buy a car? I would love for you to buy a car. They also got straight up disrespectful with how many commercials were coming out before the actual Super Bowl. I felt like anytime one of them would come on during the game, I had already seen it for weeks leading up to that. Now, do I necessarily blame the companies for this? No, I blame Mr. Bowl for charging millions of dollars for one 30 second spot. Mr. Bull, you're out of control. It makes sense for the companies to get as much out of these ads as they can, right? And to only play them one time during one game would be financially irresponsible. Even if that one time is gonna be the most viewed thing on TV for the entire year. And talked about for years to come by some schmuck in his living room. But the bummer is that these companies all seem to have decided that they're gonna get their money's worth before the commercial instead of just airing it at the big game and then having it continue afterwards. Why is the premiere happening before the event? This makes no sense. It'd be like if they released a movie on DVD before putting it in theaters. You know, I get that you want to get use out of your commercial that you spent millions of dollars for, but why destroy the fun of the big reveal that comes with it? The commercial breaks used to be an event. You were glued to your TV during the game and during the commercials you never could get up to pee. But now the commercials will come on and I'm like, oh, okay, that's the Bud Light commercial that I saw three weeks ago on Facebook. All right, I'm gonna get some more buffalo chicken dip, I guess. I mentioned it in my Thanksgiving Day Parade video, but getting a float in the parade is so much more bang for your buck than doing a Super Bowl commercial. Both things are iconic and both things are talked about after the fact. It's so much cheaper to get a float in the parade. But y'all aren't ready for that conversation. <laughs> Let me just break down the math of a, of a super, let me get comfy first. I'm gonna break down the math of a, a modern day Super Bowl commercial for you. We'll use last year as an example. So a 30 second spot costs $7 million and 115 million people tuned into the Super Bowl. So that comes out to costing about six cents per viewer. If I applied that same equation to my YouTube channel right here, and let's say I guesstimate that a video is gonna get 300,000 views. My videos are kind of all over the place but 300,000 seems like something I could achieve. I would be making 
$18,000 for a single 30-second sponsor. And let me let you in on a little secret here, guys. I'm not making $18,000 for a single 30-second sponsor. I sure as heck didn't today. So, you know, seems like maybe it's getting a little out of hand. Doritos. Advertise on my channel. What are you doing wasting your time with the Super Bowl? I'll get you a good rate, baby. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention the greatest Super Bowl project of all time that took place in 2012, and that is Subs Across America. If you want all the juicy details about that, I made a video about that as well. Golly, this is just an advertisement for my whole channel, isn't it? No. It's a tight ass. So, okay, what do we have? 2010s. Some of the most undeniable bangers, but also way too much interference from big studios and big money for the whole thing to live up to its full potential. The 2010s were Revolver. Look at these two troublemakers. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Wicked car, is that new? Yeah, it's a Sonata. Let me pack it. Oh, you're not fitting your car in there. Chris, stop being a smarty man, all right? Look who's got smart pack. The 2020s have been straight up synthetic. Can you feel that? Like most things have just been off for the last few years. I wonder why that is. We've all been treated so well. When the world starts to devolve into chaos and your entire life feels like it's out of your own control, what is the one drug that tends to bring people back? Nostalgia. Nostalgia, okay? Where were you going? Ah, to live in a time before whatever this is. This is not good, said the people, and the ad agencies listened. So I think the 2020s so far can be characterized by shameless celebrity cameos and nostalgia bait. Hey, you all know this person, right? And you remember this thing from before, right? And what about this person you know doing the thing you know from before? If you want to roll your eyes so hard that they detach from the inside of your head, watch the 2020 Sabra Hummus commercial. They did not even try to do anything creative. The entire thing is just 30 seconds of low-level celebrity cameos. Are you a 60-year-old mom? Are you a 60-year-old dad? Are you a middle schooler with scrambled eggs where your brain should be? Okay, boomer. It's insulting. You think I'm gonna fall for that just because I know who someone is? Oh, this ad is so good because... Uh, because that's Urkel. Wow, I simply must buy Sabra hummus because... <laughs> this is how I must. Turkey! <sighs> Damn it. So, listen, okay? It hasn't been all bad. We were gifted with one of the most poetic Curb Your Enthusiasm memes of all time when Larry David promoted this company that ended up being a crypto scam. I call it the wheel. Hmm. I don't think so. One of the worst ideas I've ever heard. Edison, can I be honest with you? It stinks. Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's simply too good. That is the universe giving you a little wink. Like everything's gonna be okay, you know? And maybe you're thinking, Scott, stop eating on camera. Scott, you say the 2020s were loaded with celebrity cameos, but all of the commercials from all of the eras that you've been showing have kind of featured celebrities. What are you talking about? What's so different about the 20s? And to that I say, Fair, but I did watch every commercial. So please trust me when I say the 2020s have been the most egregious by a long shot. It used to kind of be a pleasant surprise to see a celebrity pop up in a Super Bowl ad. Like, oh wow, look at that, it's Seinfeld. That's kind of fun. And now it's kind of shocking to not see one. It's way less likely that a commercial features all unknowns in it. Just working actors from LA, you know? I cannot believe how many of my past videos I've been referencing today, <laughs> but I made a video last fall titled, There Are Too Many Celebrity Game Shows. And that same phenomenon is happening here. Can we not have anything that's not riddled with celebrities. Can't we have a goofy Doritos ad where there's a pug and there's a guy and I don't know the guy and I sure as heck don't know the pug and I'm focused on the product and the funny commercial and I'm focused on whatever but I'm not focused on Brian Cranston. I don't know. I don't know if that matters or if anyone if it makes sense. What I don't know. It just feels like there's too much celebrity stuff. Okay, I get a bad vibe from it. And the weirdest decision in advertising history, 2020 was the year that they decided to randomly change Jake from State Farm to a different guy. Why did they, why did they do that? Who asked for that? Who asked for that to be done? So weird. It's the same name, it's Jake from State Farm, it's a different guy. What if you swapped Tony the Tiger out with a different tiger? Is it all of a sudden, is it still Tony the Tiger? That'd be so weird. They're treating Jake from State Farm like Doctor Who. So, okay. 
Let's label the 2020s so far. Famous people popping up left and right, and enough nostalgia to send you into an early midlife crisis. I say the 2020s are all of T-Pain's features from when I was in middle school. Sing it to a rapper! Shawnee, I'ma make ya! Straight to the top, yo! Shawnee, I'ma take ya! Don't call me- so now that we've covered all that, and thank you for joining me for that, maybe we can answer the question from before, have Super Bowl commercials gotten worse? Well, objectively, unfortunately, I do not have the sales numbers, so I can't tell you that. But subjectively, I don't know, maybe. I think so. I think like most things, the magic has simply started to wear off. And not just for viewers. You know, it used to be so fun, so exciting, but after a while, things get old. I think advertisers feel the same way. It's too expensive, there isn't as much prestige that seems to come with it anymore. There's many reasons why it doesn't feel as shiny as it used to. And that affects every aspect of it from creation to viewing and it just makes it all feel a little bit worse. I have already seen a ton of Super Bowl commercials from this year, which is strange because last I checked, the day I'm filming this, uh, the Super Bowl has not happened yet. And maybe the most notable one, the one that they've been pushing the hardest, can you guess what it is? The resurgence of the Geico Caveman. A little bit of nostalgia? Hmm. 2020s, you're too predictable. All right, well, anyway, I think that's all I got for you today. Now, what you can do is go watch the GoDaddy video or the Got Milk video or the Thanksgiving Day Parade video or the Subs Across America video or any of them, just any video on the channel that you are interested in. Try to enjoy the Super Bowl this year, even though the Vikings are not playing, I do give you permission to tune out and I, I don't blame you for not wanting to watch it. But thank you for watching this video. All right, extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier. You guys are so great. I love you so much. Austin, good luck. I know you're singing this weekend. The whole fam is going to be rooting you on. We're proud of you, buddy. All right, that's all I got for you. I'll talk to you again very soon. Slippery little floor here. Goodbye. Whoa. Whoops. I almost landed in my hummus. Girl. Oh, invisible girl